Yep, yep, yep. Fireballs. He's dead, he's dead, he's dead. I didn't even awaken. I didn't even awaken. Kill him. <laughs> we got a couple days until Slayer's out. All right, you guys asked me to make this Punisher Slayer guide. Here we go, this gotta take a while. It's gonna be very detailed. If I miss anything, it will be like in a follow-up video. This is Slayer Punisher, AKA Executioner. I call it Executioner in Korea. You guys will be Punisher. It's a class engraving. And we're gonna learn the fundamentals version one because there is no balance patch. If anything changes, if there is a new build or something, then there'll be a version two. My Slayer journey, for those that don't know. All right, I started Slayer day one. We got her to uh, 1580 day one. We were the first ones to do a con as Slayer. That was fun. We also were the two Slayers that entered Voldyke hard, the current end game, day one. We cleared it day one. That was fun. At the current moment of this recording, I need to lay down my credentials. There are people like, all this guy does is swipe. Well, okay, sure. But I need to swipe to showcase the ceiling. And so far, my Slayer does have the most gear out of all the Slayers. Um, and if you think that's cap, that's because you're missing the fundamentals. So listen to the lecture. So yeah, that's my uh, Slayer journey. I have tried at the ceiling, at the peak, in multiple raids. I've played multiple builds. Uh, even yesterday, when I was doing the hard, uh, what is that? Hard Voldyke, I played four different builds, showcasing all the different builds. But yeah, so basically what I'm saying is I have the credentials uh, to speak my mind about this. Came out with a lot of builds that a lot of people are using today. So purpose of this guide is make you a beginner to advanced. Not only um, Slayer, Punisher, but hopefully in determining how to gear your own character from now on and where to get some upgrades. Uh, intended audiences have basic understanding of gearing and engravings, right? Not for folks that don't know what a rock is. So basic understanding, if you don't know math and stuff, then, you know, I'll get you caught up to that. So table of contents, we got Punisher's role. What is my role in a raid? And what is the core of Punisher Slayer? And uh, understanding Slayer's strengths in uh, today's meta. And then we're going to talk about builds and terminology, gearing, skills, Pretty much some cycle stuff. All right, so what is Punisher's role? Her role is burst damage. She has high stagger destruction. Anytime you want to see stagger destruction, you can come to my stream type. I don't even have to be live. Exclamation build. Go to the lower page and each skill does show stagger and destruction points. Although we do have consistent stagger and destruction and we can provide burst stagger and destruction, we most likely will hold those skills unless it is going to be a group wipe mechanic check then we will participate we are a gauge class we build gauge hold off damage skills we'll talk about that soon anyways so our job is to push boss from uh after a mechanic check to the next check all right we gotta chunk the boss so that we go to the next mechanic check all right because the faster we cut that phase we see less patterns, short patterns. You probably could relate to this when you guys have done Gate 5 Bro Shaza. Gate 5 Bro Shaza, there's a lot of short patterns, the shotgun skill, the triple spray, you know, the one she push you down, you gotta get into the yellow circle. Those are called short patterns. Longer you're exposed to short patterns, the more likely one or two people will die. And then when you get people dying in Gate 5, you know what that means. So another thing, what is our role? We have, we're equipped. And because we're equipped, we'll be based, we'll be graded upon our high 6, 8, 10, 12, 15 second burst. All right. With short downtime to recuperate. And unlike Igniter, I, I, I just don't understand. Uh, there's a lot of basic uh, explanation to punish your slayer. They're like, hey, just, uh, it's just an entropy Igniter. Uh, maybe on paper, but we do recuperate way faster. And um, she is exceptionally good at sucking sucking synergy we'll talk about that later remember we're gonna go from beginner to advanced right she's good at sucking synergy and that is very important in the lost ark end game uh meta if you're a meta chaser being able to suck synergy we'll talk about this with air as well 
is a very important thing. You need to set your character, gear it to a place where you're able to mid-max the synergy. If you're going to play a build that doesn't really utilize synergy, then you will lose out in performing your role. All right, Core of Punisher Slayer. Identity. This right here is their identity. Looks familiar with Berserker, right? If you look at this buff, Predator or Punisher, you will get 20% movement speed, attack speed, and 30% crit rate to all your skills. So that's the identity. Broken buff in burst mode. It's broken, dude. It's strong. We carry that over from the Berserker, the male slayer. We suck that. <clears throat> we brought the good things, excluded the bad things from Berserkers, okay? We're like, ah, I don't want your bad genetics, okay? I want the good stuff. Core of a Punisher Slayer in terms of gameplay is build gauge, decide when to burst. I'll show some clips of these. And then we burst. Build gauge. Build gauge safely, correctly. We'll talk about that later. And we have to decide, use our brain when we burst. And then you burst, rinse and repeat. That is how it plays. This is called a Nefisher. Okay, you got to use a, it's not a physical class. Physical class is like a pinnacle glavier. Just do your rotation, you know, this uh, stand stands, press buttons, that, 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 stand stands, that, that, that. That is called a physical build in Korea. That's why you never see pinnacle glaviers getting buffed to the moon. Nefisher is like Igniter Sork uh, and uh, Punisher Slayer. You got to think in advance what you're gonna do and then because like you, you you lose so much if you don't if you decide to burst you go to burst mode and you're just running around that is huge loss so next minimize time not in the burst mode you want to go back in the burst mode asap that is what a good slayer does as you get more and more comfortable you'll be good at these three things build gauge safely i'll talk about how Decide a burst, and then you burst. Next, go hard as possible during the burst mode. There, there's no like, this is another thing. You got to also think about your order of burst. There's no like perfect cycle. I do talk about it on stream, but that's when you're super advanced. I'll show you a clip of what a perfect cycle is. Perfect cycle. Here we go. Holy 1 billion. Holy 1.4. No crit. Ah, oh, waking no crit. But the cycle is perfect. Dream cycle. Whew. Wait, is he gonna have gauge for this? Ooh. 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 Oh. Oh. Oh yeah, perfect cycle. Let's go. One crit, one didn't crit. Like if a boss is going to be staggered for 2 seconds or 3 seconds, then you need to think about what skill you need to use next. Also, um your Z skill, Bloodlust has super armor. So you need to be able to like, for example, if a boss is about to do a backward kick or backward push, you can start with like a guillotine, one of your uh instant burst skill, and then you can use Z so that you have super armor protection from any kicks the boss will do. So those are things that um you need to think about when you're in the burst mode. Z is your daddy. It has a built-in cooldown reset. What does that mean? So every time you go into burst mode, your Z will come back up. That's why you do not go cooldown gem on this skill because every time you go into burst mode, the cooldown is reset. Now, where does Punisher Slayer uh, get its... Where does she get her power? Where does it come from other than her big-ass titties? Um, so activate Z burst mode equals 30% crits and 20% attack speed and movement speed. We talked about that. Which equals attack movement speed capped as full spec entropy. Anybody play entropy in chat? Anybody play shock scrapper, death blow striker? What is something that is not fun about them? You're not movement speed capped. You're not attack speed capped. You don't have that luxury. You're not modernized. This is a dream. As a Punisher Slayer, you do get the capped movement speed attack speed when in the burst mode. And outside of it, you still get that um, attack speed, movement speed coming from 
the swiftness coming from your necklace. We'll talk about that later in gearing. Class engraving gives 25% damage and a 20% crit to Z during burst mode. That is the class engraving. Class engraving is super, super strong. It protects your strongest hitting ability, which is your Z. Comprises over 35% of your damage per cycle. Okay, so it's like... Imagine a Surge Blade where a Surge is almost guaranteed to crit. That's what Slayers have. So her hardest hitting ability, 35% of her damage is protected by Super Armor plus 90 pl uh, plus, what is that? Percent crit protection. For me, I think I have 97 or 98. So the Super Armor will protect you eat mechanics, a lot of mechanics. And knowing when to do that and the timing of Z, that's an indicator of a good Punisher Slayer. And uh, her burst mode tempo, we call that Dilmorgi in Korean. No guys really talk about this. One of the most important things. Her burst mode tempo is huge. It's a huge perk. So when it's time to burst, as I was showing the clip, you have your skills up and uh, you have many skills to go through. Right? Once again, she has grade 6, 8, 10, 15 second burst. The window's crazy. Other classes lose steam. So she just goes back to back, smashing. Like Hulk in rage mode. It's not like um uh like Reaper, they gotta get the gauge, they gotta stealth, and then soup. Gauge, stealth, soup. No 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 no. What we do is we get all that gauge stuff before, and then when it's time to damage, we just do damage. None of that stuff like the bop bop slap kind of like tempo that other classes have we don't have that we get the gauge beforehand when it's time to burst we burst we just truck damage truck 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 there's no m messing around okay this is very important when it comes to con and above in the end game current end game meta is designed to reward punisher slayer not because of class it's because oh i guess partly because of the class and the way she's designed, but because the boss fights are designed this way as well. Lost like fight this fight designs are they keep designing it like this to help gauge bursters. And uh let's see. Always will have damage skills at ready when it's damage face. Example of con gate one, two, three. We'll talk about why her skills are always up. And pretty good sustain mobility and burst mobility. Alright, something that once again that full spec entropy don't have um like for example shock scrappers don't have access to or death will striker and next stats are not wasted just they're just so tightly tuned if you correctly gear your slayer your punisher slayer you will not like waste your stats for example what is it a waste of stat let's talk about it swiftness class so if you're playing like a first intended war dancer because you know i used to play one if you have 1800 swiftness plus and the boss goes into mechanic check He's taking 90% less damage. What is a class like Igniter or a class like Punisher Slayer doing? They're smiling. Why are they smiling? Because we still do 10% damage or 5% or 1%. It's not completely immune, so we're building gauge. Meanwhile, swiftness classes, they can't really do much. Their swiftness, that cooldown reduction is all being wasted. Meanwhile, we're not because we're going to get gauge. This will make sense when we, once we talk about gearing. It just, it just flawlessly built. I don't know if it's coincidence or just genius design by Smellgate. And more strengths. Uh, high EHP. She is about 7th upon grudge users. She's Shushire. She's queen of Shushire. She's royal blood. EHP same as Berserker. Alright. She is tanky. You can use it to ignore mechanics along with Z. Z gives super armor and Awakening gives super armor. I don't really even feel cursed all because of the high EHP. Okay. Uh, next, high spec efficiency. The spec scaling is insane for your Z skill, your awakening skill. It, it, it's just insane. Other skills as well, because it increases your damage while in burst mode. Entropy is a perk. It's also it's a double-edged sword, but if played right, it provides. There is RNG involved, but it does have a higher ceiling compared to Hitmaster. Can suck that juicy synergy. All right. Not only numerical buffs from synergy skills like back, head, armor break, but also having multiple head attack, head attackers, or even your support standing near the front will really increase an entropy back attack damage, especially Slayer. All right. The taunt, the blue gun lancer identity, 
so that you don't get knocked up or pushed back. Those enhance your damage like crazy because you your job once again is to do damage as much damage when you're in burst mode any interruption is very bad a goblino is someone who knows mechanics and knows when to ignore the mechanics or eat the mechanics so that they could do more damage all right so a goblino slayer's burst mode cycle lines up decently with a goblino supports damage buffs depends i say decently because it depends on what the support class is what is a goblino support a goblino support is a support that's not scared to build gauge you're not supposed to be scared building gauge because of high Ain't ehp so the better you get as a slayer you'll outpace their gauge generation depends also on the build sometimes you'll build gauge so fast that the only class that could support you or line up with your burst mode is an ayaya who is also a goblino ayaya with full gauge build they will sacrifice a lot of things just to give you that uh damage buff all right she's perfect for the burst phase meta now people love to say that oh well burst doesn't really they're not really good in progression well let's think let's think about progression in nau nau south american progression is not the same as kr you guys have guides you guys kill it pretty fast let's just say um in korea when we did uh voldyke for 12 to 16 hours of progression um if you're a decent player, you know when to burst after a couple pulls. After a couple pulls, and then, you know, if you're really doing, like, those progressions where you're wiping at, like, uh, 10 bars left, 5 bars left, 3 bars left, by then, you guys pretty much know when to burst. There's no, like, burst sucks for progression. Nah, 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 nah. Okay? So, she just fits perfectly Slayer, with the Slayer. burst meta. And the reason why it's a burst meta is because that's how Smoggy designed the raids in Lost Ark. You start to fight, do damage, got some short patterns, you know, and then, oh, at this bar, we're going to do a counter check. And then back, and then you get the, you know, you counter, and as you do that, you get gauge, you come out of it, you burst again. And the bard or the support also has a damage buff to go alongside with you. And then you burst, burst, burst. And then you go to the next mechanic check. Then you get gauge. Maybe it's a stagger check. You still get gauge, right? Then you come out, and the bard also got gauge because you're playing with the Goblino uh, bard, for example. And then you go to burst mode. It just heavily rewards that. It's perfect for eating the pie. No ramp up, just flip a switch. That's another beautiful thing about Punisher Slayer. There's no like a little bit of. There's no like setup. Once you have gauge, you go. Once you have gauge, there's no like. Oh, I gotta like a. Uh, uh, pre-buff myself uh roar of courage and the wind whisper uh like a little war dancer no dude you just go you just go 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 okay there's no little tornado chasing the boss and ticking and no no wasting my time okay that shit's like old school all right and what is another perk her range of her damage skills not the gauge generating skills her damage skills the ones that matter have insane range i don't know how this is People just look at my stream and they're like, oh, well, the Punisher Slayer does a lot of damage. It's OP. But you don't understand why it's OP. These are the reasons why it's OP. So when someone asks you, why should they get nerfed? These are the things that is not balanced. Her range of the skills is crazy. It's cracked. She's not T-Rex. It's 12 meters. Oh, boss wants to run? so many incidents where the boss is running away from me and i still get it even if i'm here and the boss turns i just reposition oh boss is running away okay this really yeah. helps uh so let's talk about the last close quarter gate skills do not have to be a back attack you can I mean, if you're really confident, you can back attack. But you don't have to. You could, like, get some gauge here. Let's say the boss is very dangerous at the front and at the back, like the frog. Then you could get some gauge in the at the side or towards the front paw. It doesn't matter because the gauge skills, unlike Igniter, they don't do that much damage. They do, like, little baby damage. And next... Builds and terminologies. 1.0 versus 1.5 versus 
I'm going to exclude the uh, 1.03. That's really advanced. And it's very niche. So what is a 4.4? Four, four? You're going to hear these terms. These are very important terms to know. What is a 4.4, four, 5.3, 6.2, and a 4.3? So first number means generating skills. This build has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 generating. Gauge generating skills. That's what it's talking about. The different builds. Um, and then the second number is the damage skills that you nuke with during the burst mode. They're always up because you save them. Now, spec swiftness, uh, you want to play 5-3, which is the one I just showed you, or 4-3, which has a movement skill built in. Okay, so a 5-3 is considered one, point, uh, one cycle build. And... The 4-3 is a 1.5 cycle. So what does that mean? What does a cycle mean? So let's say we have no gauge. What we're gonna do is use these five skills. Uh, after using the skills once and hitting the five skills, we have full gauge. That is a one cycle. The other one, you need one and a half cycles. That's why we call it 1.5. That's what spec swiftness necklace will play. And then spec crit can play 6-2 or 5-3. Spec crit is not really recommended. It's very niche. It's very hard to play because it's judgment conviction. You have to fit a lot of the burst skills with the cooldown reduction of the judgment conviction. Judgment conviction has an entropy. Uh, highly don't recommend this build. But yeah, this is what we're going to talk about today. Next, uh, what do I recommend off the bat? I recommend the 1.5 cycle. Also, superior, if you have a 97 adrenaline, 7 being the adrenaline or 10 adrenaline rock, I highly recommend this build because if you're going to have adrenaline 2, if you're going to have adrenaline 2, you need to protect it. You can't let it fall off. Adrenaline 1, if you lose the adrenaline 1 stack versus losing an adrenaline 2 stack, you already know what's, what's worse, right? <laughs> Losing Adrenaline 2. Oh, man, that's huge DPS loss, dude. Oh, yeah, also, I recommend you guys making a macro for this, too. When you guys activate Z to activate a macro. All right, so let me expend my gauge. And 1.5 cycle. So I use my generating skills. And I don't have full gauge yet. I don't have full gauge. They're going to come back up. And then... After one and a half cycles, I have full gauge. Okay, this is recommended for 9-7. And uh, for those that are playing uh, Punisher Slayer for the first time, because it's easy to maintain adrenaline. Easy to maintain adrenaline. And other perks as well. We'll talk about that. A true Slayer main should carry 1.5, learn it, master it, and then add 1.0, master that, and then start to you know, decide... What fight I want to use 1.5? Depends also on your raid DPS. Okay, so gate 1 and 2, 1.5 is what I do in Korea. And uh, 3 and 4, I use 1, 1 cycle build. And then 5 and 6, because there's a lot of downtime, I use 1.5. There's a lot of DPS stops, right? For a Brawl Shaza hard mode. So that's like an example. And then you could add... Uh, 1.03 or other builds as you go along, as you become more and more advanced as a Punisher Slayer. All right. Next, what is a 1.5 cycle? I showed you guys in game. You need one and a half cycles to get enough gauge to go into Berserk mode. I mean, Burst mode. What are the perks? You need less spec, less specialization, less rune. You don't need a second purple rune. As a matter of fact, I did this on stream last week. Well, I don't have VODs of that, but I did it on stream and I showcased not even having a purple rune. I just stripped it off and the rotation was fine. So easier entry point uh, for cost and gearing. Uh, you can add a mobility skill, Wild Rush. Wild Rush is uh, it's a better version of the Berserker. It's beautiful. Okay. Get the multiple charges. Very nice. On top of that, you can use Spacebar. First time playing. This will help you ease into it uh, to get the back attacks. All right. Less thinking involved in keeping up synergy adrenaline. It's so easy to keep up your synergy and adrenaline. Less brain power involved because this, I don't have any cooldown gem and I'm able to keep the synergy up and able to keep up my adrenaline. Just spam it when it's off cooldown. Less stressful. 
No cooldown gem required for that skill. And what is it? Uh, it's not randomized rotation. The, the rotation, when you go into burst mode, you will have all your burst skills. You'll have Volcanic Eruption, Brutal Impact, Guillotine. Uh, and of course, Z skill, Bloodlust, that always comes up every time you go into burst mode. So you're, it's going to have the highest DPC uh, damage per cycle in actual raid. And uh, the second highest in Trixian. Uh, Trixian don't matter, okay? So highest DPC in the actual raid. When it's time to burst, you'll have like bonker amount of skills to use that lines up without using your brain too much. You don't have to pre-plan, stuff like that. Uh, you'll understand this as I show you guys the cycle later on. And you get more satisfaction out of it because you get to use all your, you get to dump all your damage skills in the burst mode. Every burst mode, you get to dump all your damage skills. It just feels good. So I tested this on stream with 1680 specialization. For those that are like, oh my God, I need 1800 spec. Oh my God, I can't afford it. Well, look at this build. Maybe you read a wrong guide. You don't need that much spec. I test it as low as 1680. You could go even further down, but I think most of y'all will have at least 1680 anyways. Uh, specialization at no second purple wealth rune. As a matter of fact, I told you as already, um, I told you guys already, I even stripped off the gem, I mean, uh, the rune. Um, so you're fine. Cycle remains intact. The cycle to build gauge and to burst stays intact. The flow of it doesn't really change. But the damage between uh, the damage difference between 1680 spec and the perfect spec is what what I have, what I calculated on stream with screenshots. Uh, it was about 8.7 to 9 percent damage difference, which Sorry, is about my best face uh, and hair. It's May about can't wait it's, it's about 18 spec equals 1 percent damage for my Z skill and bloodlust. So. I mean, this this is no laughing matter. After 1680 spec, your rotation is not hindered, but you just do more damage, right? So the more spec you have, the feeling stays the same, but you just do more damage. You see bigger numbers. Next, what is a 1.0 or one cycle then? I showed you guys that in game. There's a 6-2 build as well, where you drop the volcanic eruption. This skill, you could drop this. And then add another generator, but nah, I mean, you can do that if you don't meet the spec requirements. But once again, if you're going to do that, might as well just play the 1.5 build, which is the one you're seeing now. Okay, so you go six generators or five in movement and then two spenders, not spenders. They're not spenders. They're damage skills. That's a six two. Not recommended, though. Unless you're going to play the spec crit build. The very niche build. Alright, what are the perks of a one cycle? More uptime on burst mode. Because you're cycling faster. You're getting gauged faster. That means you go into burst mode faster. Every time you go to burst mode, what resets? Your Z skill. Your bloodlust. It's the hardest hitting ability for your uh, Punisher Slayer. So the more you do this, the better it is. Right? Another thing is... Uh, more thinking involved. For those that like to like plan and, you know, think, not just like snooze, they like this kind of build as well. Uh, more thinking involved in making sure all gauge skills lands and in timely fashion. Because you want to land all your generating skills, you have to think about it. Like, am I going to do back attack here? Am I going to do side attack? You need to make sure the gauge skills land. Not as forgiving as the 1.5. So cooldown gems start to matter more here. You see where, where we're going? The faster it is, the more cooldown gems intensive it is, the more spec you're required, and the runes, the wealth runes as well. Because you're going into Z form so fast, some of your burst skills, like Brutal Impact, they're not going to be up. When you're in that burst mode, this skill may not be up. So you want to minimize that. How do you minimize that? Cooldown gems. Better cooldown gems. It could be a perk because for those that have like, you know, high cooldown gems and they like to strategize while they're playing, this could be a perk. It could be a con for you though. All right. So when mastered, it will be tied with 1.5 cycle with damage per cycle, but also higher floor sustain. Not always. More demanding spec uh, specialization. So additional tools needed. More spec needed. Con. 
harder adrenaline management. But it's okay to let it fall off. So let's say you go into burst mode, which I'll show you guys later in the cycle demonstration. When you're in the burst mode and you used all your burst, I mean the, the, the damage skills and you got no more, then yeah, you could let adrenaline fall off because why is adrenaline that important when you're trying to build gauge? When you're trying to build gauge, like adrenaline stacks don't really matter because the, the gauge skills don't do that much damage. But there is the added uh, harder adrenaline management because you're going to remove this skill right here. Flash Blade. Flash Blade with that beautiful cooldown will be gone. You're not going to have a short cooldown skill. So there will be a little bit added stress of adrenaline, but not too much. You don't have to worry about it. You can let it fall off after you finish your burst rotation. Uh, let's see. Lots of auto attacking. You're going to have some dead periods. I'll show you guys this. There's going to be a lot of auto attacking. And hard to squeeze in, uh, quick recharge, and bleed rune. And you're going to lose mobility skill. Why is it hard to squeeze in, quick recharge rune, and bleed rune? Well, because you got to use wealth runes. All right? Wild Stomp Stress. Wild Stomp Stress. Wild Stomp is going to be your synergy skill. Instead of this being your synergy skill in the 1.5 cycle, in the 1 cycle, this is going to be your synergy skill. I used level 7 cooldown gem, and it was fine. The better, of course more forgiving it is uh also don't reuse after 60 percent remaining in burst mode you don't want to reuse wild stomp the synergy skill when your burst gauge the burst mode gauge right here when this is at 60 percent right here where, your, where the mouse is and you refresh it when you refresh the synergy well i don't have that build right now i'll just show you guys So look at my synergy skill, there's 5, 4, 3, refresh now, it's before 60. So synergy's in, auto attacking, auto attacking, a lot of attacking. I'm gonna guillotine twice, and then we use W after the cycle ends to get gauge. There you go. Wild Stomp, using it before 60, makes it sure that after the burst mode is over, the Wild Stomp cooldown comes back up. Now, there are scenarios where you will use it right before it ends. There are scenarios. Because let's say your guillotine comes back up and you don't have the synergy skill. Then you have to decide if I want to refresh the synergy and get the guillotine in before the burst mode ends. But then this skill will not be back up when you need to generate gauge. So you'll cycle other skills. But then there comes a little bit of problem because this skill gives attack speed. So you're going to be getting gauged without attack speed. Meaning, longer animations. Meaning, if the boss moves or knocks you, you're not going to get safe gauge. So there is thinking involved with this build, is what I'm trying to say. Test it on stream with 1780 specialization. And with second purple wealth rune, full gauge after just one. Uh, so, so what this means is that if you have 1780 specialization and two purple wealth runes, and you put them on the right skills. After one cycle, you just need to auto attack once. Auto attack once and you have full gauge. Now, if you have uh, above 1782 specialization, then you don't have to auto attack. So this is the minimum cut line for the one cycle build. So higher spec after that is just more damage. Animation cancel, we'll talk about that at pro level with elixir, Sambongde, which is a space bar elixir. So when you space bar, it gives you 11.4% damage increase. When you don't have that yet, you guys don't have elixirs yet. Uh, it's not even really recommended. There are crit damage um, elixirs that you could use. But this is for those that enjoy this. You need to know how to animation cancel. So watch. I can't jump directly. Once again, I'm spamming F. Volcanic eruption does delay. You can cancel it with space bar. Okay, and when you space bar, that elixir set kicks in. Okay, if you look at the buff bar. That's the space bar set right there. That's the space bar set. Okay, you see the no you notice the difference? Versus there's a little bit of difference. If you cancel too fast, if you cancel too fast, then no damn. 
Okay. You don't have to do this. By the way, you don't have to do this. You can just activate Z instead. And then F. See, that Z eats the can- There's no uh, animation at the end of it. There's only animation at the end of a brutal impact, which you can space bar into F. But if you don't want to do that, you can just do this into a Z, into an F. Volcanic eruption. So that is something you could do as well. Another thing you need to know terminologies is there's the two guillotine two furious claw build. This is pretty much the meta. Whether you're playing uh, 1.5 or one cycle, you need to know this term. So it kind of feels like fitting in two doomsdays, right? You do the la la titeba si, and then you activate uh, Z, and then towards the end of it, before it expires, you do doomsday again. Kind of like that, but not as punishing, because uh, two guillotines, it's about 16% of your damage, all right? It's not as big as uh, doomsday, but as a slayer that want to improve themselves, you want to try to get two guillotines in every burst mode cycle if you're playing the 1.5. Uh, cycle build if you're playing the 1.0 cycle build then when it's time for burst phase then you want to like make sure your guillotine is up for double slaps of the guillotine i'll show you that in the cycle part so just the terminology you need to know and charging versus snapping so there are tripods uh that you will change for example guillotine uh let's see not not guillotine we'll do we'll do brutal impact so brutal impact i change this a lot during stream depending on the fight. So if the end game boss fight, there's a lot of mobility. The boss turns, maybe you don't have a gun lancer, maybe you don't have head attackers. You're playing with like three entropy, dude, the boss spinning. Then you wanna do slaps. This also has a faster um, ending animation. You do a little bit less damage, but landing the skill is more important. By landing more brutal attacks, you may be increasing your overall chance of getting MVP. Instead of uh, using the charge and not landing it because the boss is just shifting, moving like crazy. So this is a tripod. This is called a snap. You need to know this. You need to be able to switch per fight. I switch this tripod a lot. Alright, let's talk about damage gems. <clears throat> Chat, let me ask you guys. What do guides say about uh, Punisher Slayer? What gems do they say you need? You could go with four damage gem, but recommended is five. Five has a little bit higher ceiling. Um, in terms of what level does a damage gem have to be? That, hey, any, uh, that depends on whoever is inviting you, right? But the order, the priority is this. Bloodlust, the Z, it's bulk of your damage. Brutal impact. Volcanic eruption is equal to guillotine. If you're good at guillotine, if you're good at fitting in two guillotines per cycle, in per burst mode cycle, then guillotine has a little bit more priority. But volcanic eruption is a little bit safer until you get a little bit better at it. So I would say volcanic eruption is equal to guillotine. And then uh, guillotine would be the fourth priority if you're learning raise and adapting. And then lastly will be furious claw. Furious claw is last, 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 okay? Z, very important. Brutal impact, very important. Volcanic eruption, equal to guillotine. If you're good at guillotining, <laughs> and then uh, Furious Claws, way, way down. All right, so it's both, for both builds, this is the order. Next, uh, cooldown gems. So for 1.5 cycle, level 7 is fine. For Wild Stomp, Furious Claw, there's a, there's a star. Spinning Sword, Volcanic Eruption. Uh, level 8 plus, Guillotine 8 is tight. It's like Doomsday, right? Doomsday, you know, there's like a cooldown gem cutoff. Guill Guillotine 8 is a little tight. In actual fights, it's going to be tight. 9 will be smoother. But even with level 10, sometimes you cannot get double Guillotine. That is, it is what it is. So in actual fight, you know, if the boss is zip-zapping around, you might not get two Guillotines in a row. So... Yeah, don't try to like push it. Like it's not a it's not a must. Eight eight is okay. Nine is comfy. Ten even if you have ten, sometimes you cannot get two guillotines in. Even if you don't get two guillotines in, you'll still be competitive. Is what I'm trying to say. Brutal impact. If you have eight plus, it is nice. Okay, because brutal impact is a very long cooldown skill. Next for one cycle, uh, less cooldown gems intensive on paper. It looks like that. 
it looks like it's less cooldown gem intensive on paper, but more demanding in actual fights. So level 7, you can get away while stomp level 7. We talked about this earlier. That's the synergy skill. The higher, the more comfier though. But 7 is good enough. Alright, 7 is a cutoff. Furious Claw. Same thing with these stars mean uh, 7 is good enough, but you, 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 it's, a, it's a demanding spec, okay? Spinning Sword. If you're going to use this as a mobility skill in burst mode, you want this to be higher. What the frick does that mean, Zeus? What does that mean, dude? So this skill right here. There are different tripods. We're going to talk about tripods. But if we use a second tripod. Watch this. Okay, let's get the... Let's do this. Let's get the cooldown reduction. And then we're going to get attack speed. Look at the animation. So some people, some pro slayers who... Who uses this build because they don't have a 9-7. Let's say the boss move, they could just reposition. Reposition. Okay. Reposition. So that they could do their Z. Alright. In that case, if you're going to use it that way, offensively, not only gauge building. It's one of your best gauge building skill. But then in burst mode, you're not building any gauge. So you can use it to reposition and then back attack here. Reposition, kill it. you could do a brutal impact, reposition, guillotine. So in order to do that, this needs to be high cooldown gem. So that when you're out of the burst mode, you want to have the skill up ASAP. So level 8 plus higher, the merrier, guillotine, brutal impact, guillotine especially. If you want to do double guillotines, brutal impact. Because 1.0 cycle build, once again, is you use 5 generating, uh, gate generating skills, and you go into burst mode. So it's a faster burst mode. You go into burst mode more often. And when you're in burst mode, you want to use damage skills. And if they're not up, then guess what you're doing? You're auto attacking. Your Z will be up. So your Z uptime is going to increase because you're going into burst mode more often. But then these skills will be sitting in cooldown. Unless you get higher cooldown gems. Not needed, but if you get them... You're rewarded. It's a receipt spec. The more spec, more damage. More cooldown gems, faster rotating skills, meaning you can utilize those skills during burst mode. So you can see that um, the more you invest into this class, the more she'll smile back. Next, very important, gauge and wealth runes. Auto attack generates, just, the number is not important. What you need to know is, does auto attack generate a gauge? Yes. Is it a lot? No. Flash Blade, the synergy skill that we use as a 1.5, it generates... The, so left hand is raw, right hand is with tripod. Do you see why tripods are important? Because you generate more gauge. Punishing Draw, that is um, a variant of a one cycle build. Punishing Draw is your second counter skill. So uh, you don't really need to bring a second counter. Uh, you kind of want to rely on your group to do counter. You're going to bring counter. Wild Stomp has counter. Cruel Pierce and this one, you, you, you change these. In the one cycle build, you change these. Cruel Pierce is obviously better because more gauge. But Punishing Draw, almost equal gauge, but this one brings a second counter. What does Cruel Pierce bring then? More gauge, a little bit more, brings more weakness. Weakness point? Weak point? Weak point. Destruction. Destruction is getting more and more important in the endgame meta. So this is good for gauge, destruction, and higher stagger. So those are the difference. Spinning sword, XX1. What the frick does that mean, dude? Let me explain. Spinning sword, right there. XX1, this one. This tripod gives a lot of gauge. How much gauge? The most gauge. In case you guys don't trust numbers. I heard some countries don't believe in numbers. They believe pictures. So I have screenshots as evidence as well. So I put the, the golden boy. The rune. This one. I put, uh, put it into wild stomp. I did it for every skill. Took screenshots. But this skill gives the most gauge. In most cases. Alright. I see some rankers. They don't even know where to put their wealth rune, dude. Don't follow them, guys. Now... What the heck? Why does this guy have golden border? Because if you're going to use spinning sword second tripod, the one that makes the animation faster. All right, so let me show you that again. 
Whoa, relax. So this one is faster animation. However, while it's faster, some people don't like this. So let's say you're at the butt of the boss. And then you use this. And the boss moves. Guess what? This is also a preference. Okay, for the 1.5 cycle, it's a preference. You could use this one, which is slower. But the last tick, the last tick gives a lot of gauge if you read the tripod. Alright? It gives a lot of gauge. Now, this, this can also miss too, right? This can also miss. So it is, it requires some skill. If we go to the faster animation, it gives less gauge than ground smash. What the frick is ground smash? Ground smash is this skill right here. Okay? So if you're gonna use this fast, fast boy, and then ground smash in your one cycle build, then you gotta change the rune. You gotta put the uh, legendary wealth rune into the ground smash. Understood? That's why I made the color codes like this. Did I make sense there? I know it was a little confusing. Let me try to explain it again. Alright, so 1.5 cycle. 1.5 cycle. Spinning sword. If you use the fast animation or the slow animation, it doesn't matter. You don't use ground smash. Okay? You don't need to. So you just put the orange wealth rune on spinning sword as 1.5 cycle. Now, where do I put the two purple ones? Furious Claw, if you have only one purple wealth rune. And then if you have one more, you could put it on Wild Stomp. That's why it has a purple border. Now, if you're playing the one cycle build, and you're using this tripod on Spinning Sword, then you put the wealth rune here. If not, if you're using the faster animation, then you put the orange wealth rune on Ground Smash. And then you put the purples, the two purples, here. If you're going to go with this, you put the orange, and then you go purple ground smash, purple furious claw, and then two more skills left for blue wealth runes. So you go cruel fear, uh, cruel pierce, or punishing draw, whichever you picked, and then the last blue on the wild stomp. If you're confused about this, you can go to exclamation build anytime on my Twitch chat, whether I'm on or off, and you can see my Slayer build. I'll show you my uh, tripod skills, runes later if you just want to copy it. But I need you guys to understand this. You need to understand the fundamentals. This is not just like some shortcut guide, as you can see. This is like a freaking one hour guide, dude. Engravings, the good part. Grudge, obviously. Ambush Master, obviously. Punisher, three GOAT options. Fourth one, if we get a Hyper Express with the helper, engraving helper, there you go. Ray Captain, okay? Now let's do some math, guys. If you don't know this by now, because all you do is copy builds, now you're here to learn. So you don't have to ask me, should I use a Kimba weapon or Miles in Greece? Now you guys can fucking understand how it works and learn the fundamentals ground up. You can stop asking, you could be your own professor. All right, so engraving, Grudge, Ambush Master, Punisher, we got out of the way. Why Raid Captain? Let me explain that in detail. Based, based from the swiftness that you have, depending on how much, uh, horizontal content you d you've done. Let's just round it to 1%. My necklace, uh, let me show you this. My necklace is, with the power of Twitch Primes, I have been able to get full 100 quality accessories. So that gives me 500 swiftness. So based off that, if you don't have a perfect necklace, it's okay. Trust me, don't rage yet. I'll explain. But I'm just showing you my stats, okay? So 1% plus 8.59 from necklace, plus 20% attack speed, movement speed from being in burst mode. All right, the burst mode buff. And then you get 10% from yearning level two. All right. And then 3.5 from feast equals my attack speed, movement speed is 43.13%. That is 3% over the cap. TLDR, you get full Raid Captain. But so-and-so said Raid Captain, you get the full utilization. But you need to understand the base. Let's deal with facts. Now, he said, she said. Yearning set level 3, which you'll get with El Gassia in June. Plus, Event Feast, you can go up to 46.63%. Alright? Looks good. So, what is Swiftness? 58.24 Swiftness, that equals... 1% attack speed, movement speed. Did you guys know that? You, sh you, sh you should have known that. Well, there you go. Stay noted. Grudge, Ambush Master, Punisher, 
Ray Captain established as the four goats. It's established. Unless you're doing some chaos dungeon, then obviously you can remove Ambush Master or Grudge, put a Contender and Preemptive Strike. Yeah, Adrenaline or Curse Doll. There's the argument of Adrenaline or Curse Doll. People are going to be asking me this all the time. I'm just going to link the video, this, this thing you're looking at. Adrenaline equals Curse Doll. What the frick does this mean, Zeals? Well, if, in case you didn't know, Adrenaline and Curse Doll gives attack. They have diminishing returns. Adrenaline 1, how does it affect my Curse Doll? Right now, if you guys are going 5 engravings, then Curse Doll gives you 16% attack. If you're going to go 5x3 plus 1, Curse Doll is the first engraving that does not provide a 16% gain. It's no longer a 16% engraving. Why? Because Adrenaline attack and the attack coming from Curse Doll has diminishing returns. How much diminishing returns? Adrenaline 1 makes Curse Doll a 15.7171% attack increaser. Curse Doll 2, 9-7 Andes. Raise your hand. 9-7 Andes. Press 1 in chat. If you have a 9-7 Curse Doll, uh, I mean 9-7 Adrenaline 2, then Curse Doll becomes a 15.444. Why? Because <laughs> Adrenaline 2 gives more attack. I mean, right. Now, if you have Curse Doll 3 and Adrenaline 3, then your curse doll becomes 15% attack increaser. It is losing efficiency. All right. With that base knowledge, let's move next to the next part. Base 2.32 plus bracelets. Uh, this is crit rate, guys. Crit. So we're talking about base crits. Bracelets. All right. We're going to go with the crit spec bracelet. We'll talk about that later. Back attack 10% crits. 20% from entry level, uh, entropy level 2, 30% from burst mode. How much is that? 65.79. Your Z, your hardest hitting skill, is protected 20% extra from the class engraving, 85.79. Pretty good. Entropy level 3. When you get set level 3 in Cayenne Gale, you get 2% more from set bonus 4 of entropy, 67.79 increased to 87.79 for your Z skill. Let's say your bracelet has 3% crits. Let's say you lucked out. Or maybe you didn't luck out. We'll talk about that later. But bracelet 3%, what does that give me? 60.79 for your awakening. Your awakening is not a back attack skill. It's not a head attack skill. It does not get the 10 bonus. 70% for your damage skills that are back attack skills and Back attack skills that are back attacking. And your Z will be 90%.79 with like a little nice bracelet. Now, let's say your support has the weakness exposure. The 2.5% extra crit. You get, you, get, you, get, you, get, you get where I'm going, chat. You get where I'm going. You need to be able to calculate it yourself. So, higher ceiling due to being able to suck crit synergy. Who has a higher ceiling? Curse Doll. Curse Doll has a higher ceiling being able to suck crit synergy. One of the most common synergies in Korea. If you have a static and you have a gunslinger, and the gunslinger is not a derp slinger, and applies the crit synergy on time, then Curse Doll could be your good fifth option. We're not finished. We're not finished. Now, this is my stats. This is my, this is what it looks like in the current end game that I am. Okay? This is the peak performance of the Mighty Slayer. What is my crit rate? 77.79. Uh, and my Z is 97.79. That's with the 9.7. Entropy level 3. That's excluding uh, support synergy. Support bracelet. Okay? Uh, so let's look here. If I go Adrenaline 3, what happens? If I go Adrenaline 3, your crit's going to be like this. So right here, this is Cursed All option. This is your Adrenaline 3 option. All right, so Adrenaline 3, you have a 85.79 for your damage skills, and your Z is over crit cap, hence lower ceiling, right? Lower ceiling because this one, Curse All 3, can suck crit synergy. If your static has crit synergy, then go Curse All. If you don't, you need to calculate this yourself, is what I'm trying to say. All right, because I don't know what bracelet you have. I don't know if you're if you run with the bar with a weakness exposure. I don't know if you are running with a gunslinger dead eye or 
Whatever. First intent war dancer. Z over crit cap. Okay, guys. Not so bueno. Engraving adrenaline or cursed all. My preference for one cycle, definitely cursed all. Since more Z spams. Okay? Z, if you go cursed all three, with these right here, you're at 90% crits. Which is pretty good, guys. You don't want to go above 90 because you want to suck synergy. You're not going to always play with the blade. So this is just my preference. You decide what you want to do. But this is my preference. I like higher ceiling. I like to be able to suck. The whole point of a good, uh, a good class is being able to suck synergy. For one cycle, definitely cursed all since more Z spams. Z spams because of the class engraving gives 20% extra crits. Less stress on keeping adrenaline up as a one cycle build. One cycle build, right? Some of the skills, you don't have flash blade. You don't have flash blade. So you don't have like a spammable skill. So there's no adrenaline stress and you have a higher ceiling. And for 1.5 cycle, easy to keep up adrenaline. So probably adrenaline three. So 1.5 cycle, adrenaline is a joke to keep up. So you could go adrenaline three. If you hate curse doll and um, you don't have any friends that have crit synergy. Okay. Or you just like critting. All right. This is only for five. When it comes to six engravings with, uh, there's a lot of viewers that are already going to go day one or week one, they want to go above 1540. Some of you guys have bought ancient accessories. In that case, curse all three, adrenaline one, done. There it is. Okay, for those that already planned ahead, pre-shopped, as soon as you saw the booba announcement, you guys already bought your ancient accessories. And this is the answer. And we'll talk about that, Ether Predator. We'll talk about that, but here we go. Key blown weapon. I get this question all the time. Adrenaline plus curse doll attack damage returns. Once again, I brought the chart out. Entropy three. Entropy three. Keen blunt weapon calculations. X equals crit chance. Okay. So if you have over 90% crit, you guys can see that over 90% crit beats curse doll three, adrenaline one. So keen blunt three, adrenaline one, you need to have 90, over 90% crits to beat out this. All right. If you have 86% or 82%, it loses, right? In the actual fight, it's even bigger, by the way. In actual fights, it's even bigger. The gap is like a one or 2%. Don't look at this and be like, oh, it's, it's just like 0.3% difference. No, 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 no. It's not 0.3 or 0.03. No, 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 no. Okay. I mean, if you really, ah, you really want to cut corners, you're like, I don't want to use Kurto. I have a keen blunt weapon book. I mean, go ahead. But if you're trying to chase ceiling, even with my gear, guys, even with my gear, as you see, Keen Blunt Weapon does not win. It wins if I get crit synergy, but I don't want to play with crit synergy. I want to play with Blade. If I'm going to be the most geared slayer, if I want to be the biggest goblino, the biggest hitting class, I'm going to stack the correct synergy. But that's just me. All right. But here are, the, here are the math for those that need it. There it is, boys. You guys know how to calculate your crit. I showed you guys how to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Why not keep blood weapon? Math says so. Next. Engravings, Adrenaline 3 plus Ether 1. Bro, don't do it, dude. It's viable. This is viable. Keen blood 3, Adrenaline 1, viable. Right? Uh, Adrenaline 3, let's say you have a reverse rock. Ugh, I'm sorry, but I mean, Adrenaline 3, Crystal 2 is viable. I mean, everything's viable, but we're chasing, if we're going, we're, we're talking about ceiling, right? We're talking about ceiling here in actual fights, not Trixian. Adrenaline 3 Ether 1 is terrible, dude, because you're an entropy class. You running around during the 15 second burst mode when you're supposed to be bursting, running around trying to pick up ethers. And depending on the uh, fight length, you might not even get to 30 stacks. Right. If you do the math, yeah, this is good. But then in actual fight, not recommended at all. I do this as a hit master. I've tested this on my arrow master as a hit master and I hate it. Once again, it's preference, but I just don't recommend it. Recommend it doesn't mean don't do it. It just means my recommendation. You could ignore me all you want. And next engravings increase mass three plus adrenaline one viable once again, but remember Losing attack speed, you do get attack speed from Wild Stomp, but if Wild Stomp is not up, you miss Wild Stomp, 
Bro, like, it's so clunky to get your gauge back. Get the gauge. Go to burst mode. Burst hard. Get the gauge. Go to burst mode. Burst hard. Do that often, you MVP. Do that too much, you get nerfed. You don't want any hindrance. You don't want any, like, reduced... Uh, yeah, but I showed you... But, 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 but your, your movement speed is, like, up over the cap. It doesn't matter. Okay, it doesn't matter. All right? Even if it's over, when you're out of the burst mode... If anything affects your gauge generation, it's not good in actual fight. I mean, it's viable. You could do it. But not recommended. Next, engravings and Punisher 1 or Punisher 2. People are like, what about, what about, what about Punisher 1 or Punisher 2? No. No. Hell no. Just don't even think about it. Accessories. All right, here we go. High spec necklace. Swiftness, not as much. Swiftness, uh, it's, you don't need that much. All right, why? Right here. Why you don't need that much uh, swiftness? As I said earlier, don't worry about swiftness because your movement speed will be comfy. Look at that. With set level 3 yearning and uh, event feast, set level 2 yearning and regular feast, you're Gucci. You're Gucci in burst mode. So you don't have to get like a 500 swiftness necklace. All right. So relax. And uh, spec earring, spec rings. Spec crit bracelet is a higher ceiling. Because anything over, if you get more swiftness, once again, guys, you're over the cap here by a little bit. Getting more swiftness added on here doesn't really help. But, 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 but zeals, it gives cooldown reduction. Well, we'll talk about that. Once you have level 9 and 10 cooldown gems, they lose a uh, little bit of efficiency. We'll talk about that. They hit a diminishing return. I'll show you that during the cycle. Um, so, spec crit has a higher ceiling. Yeah, it's going to be more expensive. I get it. But, hey, if we're chasing the ceiling, it is what it is. Higher ceiling for those rocking level 9 plus cooldown gems. Especially for... Uh, I mean, for both, both builds. 1.0, 1.5. Spec swiftness bracelet. Cheap alternative, but lower ceiling. You keep lowering your ceiling, guys. You keep lowering your ceiling, choosing the wrong engraving, choosing the wrong uh, bracelet. You're, you're cutting it. Ta, 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 ta. You know? I mean, I appreciate you doing that, though. You do help the internal data. You do lower the floor of the Punisher Slayer, less likely of me getting nerfed hard. So I do appreciate you, but if you want to chase the best, then chase the best. If you keep cutting corners, you'll be like, why, 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 my Punisher do no damage? Why, why am I not in the MVP screen? Well, you just keep cutting corners and it adds up. Bracelet bonus effects. What's the tier one? Damage. Plus damage, like warmth. Damage is nice. Crit damage. Crit damage is nice. Okay, why? Because we don't use King Bone Weapon. You have the uh, crit damage come from Entropy and that's it. And crit damage does not... Co uh, it does not affect the crit damage of... Elixirs, they're calculated differently. That's a different video. Basically, crit damage is good. Identity, ooh. So there are bracelets that give you four, five, six percent more identity. This changes things. So you could have less spec, right? Your spec cutoff gets lowered if you're playing the one cycle. It's real nice. It's nice, not needed. It's not the best in slot. As of now, it's not the best in slot, but it's nice. If you get it. Alright. Next. Tier 2. Crit. Why? Why crit? You have high crit. If you have 90% crit. 80% crit for your like your regular skills. The more crit you have. The more generation returns it, it brings. Okay. Yeah. You, you already have high crits. Like you're not, get, you're not getting the full benefit of that crit. Like a Drizzler Air Master would. Alright. So crit. You don't get as much value out of it. That's why it's tier 2. Alright. And also, you're not able to like suck crit synergy. It's just, it's just not that good. Unless you get a 5% or 4% crit roll, uh, it's tier 2. Ambush, lowest roll, not that good. It doesn't affect your awakening. It doesn't affect your gauge skills if you're not hitting from the back. All that adds up, so damage is just better. If you have a high roll ambush, then obviously it's, it's good. Alright, next. Tripods. One cycle build. Get all identity cooldown related tripods. Identity and cooldown related tripods is a must. One cycle means fast, fast. Get back into burst mode, okay? So if you're going to have level one cooldown, 
tripod, dude. What are you doing? One cycle is gear intensive. It is tight. So try to max all damage tripods on, on your three damage skills for obvious reasons. Uh, and 1.5 cycle, get level five uh, tripods, less strict compared to 1.0 because you're doing one and a half cycles. So not getting as much gauge is okay, right? Because it's going to be a little bit over anyways when you use uh, the 1.5 cycle build. All right, I'll show you that when I do the cycles. Try to max all damage tripods on three damage skills. Yeah, so here you, you could use like level four gauge tripod for the time being as you work on level fives is what I'm trying to say. Cards, Ladder Salvation, don't try or ask me about Umar Lazness, okay? Z does not have elemental property damage. It's your hardest hitting skill. Brutal Impact. Um, the, the third tripod, the first one that we're going to use does not have property. It does say fire, but it does not have a property. Okay, it's like a little debate, but you're gonna be using this anyways. So like your two hardest hitting abilities don't have property. If Slayer could use Umar Lazness, it would be just insanely broken. Lead rune is five to 6% damage. Holding gauge skills versus holding damage skills, the yin yang balance. Why cooldown gems on gauge skills and swiftness on cooldown uh, reduction beyond a certain point could lead to waste of stat. I'll show you guys that. So once you guys get set level three, what you do is you want to set this up. Spread resortion three, like you're only level three. Max mana, like you have a support. Reduce the attack speed by one and movement speed by one. This is how we test in Korea. Runes are as so. Take a screenshot. This is a one cycle build. We're going to start with the synergy skill that gives me attack speed. And then this has a long, long animation because of the tripod, but it gives a lot of gauge the most gauge skill so we got to use the attack speed and protect this one okay so i'm gonna get gauge burst mode kill a team refresh synergy it's about to uh, go off into a z into a volcanic eruption auto attack because you got nothing else you're gonna try to fit that guillotine in there there it is and then gauge Right now, look at that. You see why you need the cooldown gems? I don't have a guillotine. Auto attack, auto attack. Guillotine's up, Furious Claw, Brutal Impact. Now, would I use W right now? No, 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 I will not use W. W, attack speed, gauge, gauge skill. This is the one cycle. Guillotine's up, nothing else is up. So I could Z. Okay, W before. 60% gauge, Furious Claws up, auto, auto attacking, auto attacking, auto attacking, auto attacking. This one's gonna be pretty dead. W? See, I said don't use W before when it's about to expire. But right there, I wanna protect my guillotine. And the W will be back up. Okay. So, W, get the attack speed, protect A, guillotine, Z. W's up, refresh my synergy skill. R, brutal impact will fit. And F will fit into my cycle. Guillotine, oh, got it in. Synergy just ended, attack speed with synergy. Get the gauge. Now burst mode's up, nothing else is up. I wanna get a guillotine. So this build requires more thought process. And you see now why cooldown gems matter. That that brutal impact's not gonna fit. We gotta wait for the next cycle. It's not a very clean cycle like the 1.5. This one, the whole family's back. Synergy skill early, volcanic eruption so that it goes on cooldown. So that the cooldown of volcanic eruption will be up for the next cycle. We're gonna refresh and then guillotine in. We still have a little bit of attack speed buff. So we got the two biggest gauge skills in there. And then boom, once again, this one. Z with the synergy. And we're gonna get a guillotine. Brutal impact is higher priority. I'm gonna refresh the synergy. So you wanna use a big cooldown skills before that Furious Claw. Beautiful, that's called the one cycle. Everything one cycle. Now, in actual fight, guys, it's not going to look this pretty. Your adrenaline might fall off. OK, 
Okay, you don't want to use E and A. That's why cooldown doesn't matter too much on those. You see that brutal impact didn't get in. That's not what you want to do. You want to hold some skills. So if you have too much cooldown reduction, it does get wasted. But having level 10 is also nice later down the road because uh, you have more flexibility that way. So this cycle, we're going to get a guillotine in. Okay. Brutal impact. Put it on cooldown. Use Z while you wait for F. Refresh synergy. Guillotine next. Furious claw. And then auto attack. Auto attack. Auto attack. Nothing's coming up. This cycle is done. Gauge. You see how my adrenaline fell off? It's okay because I was just auto attacking anyways. But adrenaline's back up. When you press Z, you get adrenaline as well. It does deal damage. Brutal impact here first. Volcanic next, because you want them on cooldown. Synergy skill, guillotine. You still have attack speed left, fit in E and A. Okay. And then, boom, one cycle, this time only Z. Okay, we have S, as well as R. We're not gonna refresh the synergy, we're not gonna refresh the synergy. That brutal is not gonna fit, guys, due to the charging. It's too risky. We'll save for the next cycle. Get gauge quickly. Brutal. F. Refresh synergy. It just ended right after the volcanic eruption. But in actual fight, guys, in actual fight, you might have to just do Z before the these two skills. Because getting Z off is bigger priority. Getting the Z to back attack is a higher priority than putting these skills on cooldown because Z does so much damage. I'm gonna show you once again, wow, cooldown gems is nice, but you don't need it that high. Look at A, keep your eyes on E, A, okay, those don't need to be that high. See, they're already back up. We're not using that though. We're not using that. Double guillotine, gauge. It only matters when your E and A miss, or your W miss. The bare minimum is okay for the the flow of the cycle. Okay, we're not gonna refresh W. We're gonna let Adrenaline fall off. It's okay. The gauge. All right, so that is the one cycle. You got to use your brain, okay? It's a, like a little mini game. For those that like Tetris, what about the 1.5 cycle? So the 1.5 cycle, this is for Adrenaline. No cooldown gem on that, right? That's for Adrenaline. W gives attack speed, so let's get gauge. All right, so we did one cycle. It's not full. You don't want to use your uh, movement skill here too much. Okay, boom, go in, guillotine into Furious Claw. Brutal impact, refresh synergy into Z, into Volcanic Eruption. Auto attack, Furious Claw, that's why it's called the Double Furious Claw. Into S. Now Q has a bleed rune. And the bleed rune, when you're in burst mode, gets uh, more efficiency. So the Q is applying a bleed and it comprises about five to six percent damage. No, I was talking there. I missed the cycle. Okay, let's go back in. This one, guillotine's not up. So we're not gonna double guillotine. Yeah, can't double guillotine. That's fine. Use Furious Claw to get Gage. So as you can see, in 1.5, you get to fit in almost all your damage skills. And W is no longer a synergy skill, so you don't have to worry about that. And then we're gonna get the double guillotine off. That's why it has a higher DPC, damage per cycle, because all your big boys come up during that 15 second burst window. 
Right here. Looking good. Empty Puree. We're going to press the Z there. Get W this. Get the Synergy. Brutal Impact. You see the bleed going on. Double Furious Claw into a finisher of a guillotine. Done. Alright, building gauge, building gauge. While you're building gauge, you might as well communicate with your support. See the brutal impact? It's coming off cooldown. This one's tight. I cannot fear his claw. But I did double guillotine. Because guillotine is higher priority. And I'm Oom. By the way, speaking of Oom, you will run out of mana, dude. If you're playing really well, you will run out of mana. But guys, like, this is not how it looks in fight. In fight, you'll have all this up. Alright, I'll show you guys now what a beginner, I mean, an opener looks like. Before you start to fight, build your adrenaline, dude. Alright, you guys are getting ready. People want to go to the bathroom and shit. You get this ready. Then uh, you're going to start. Build gauge, that's one cycle. Auto attack, because it helps a little bit. Furious Claw, Brutal Impact, Reapply Synergy, Awakening, Furious Claw, Boom! That is a perfect cycle, pretty much. You fit in everything there. That's how it looks. That's a 1.5 cycle. So we'll go from 1.5. 1.5, Flash Blade, this is the Synergy skill, this is the Gauge skill. All right, you don't really need this. You don't even have, like some people just like chill like this. Like 32 skill points left over. <laughs> you know, it doesn't really matter, okay? And then this one, uh, Wild Stomp, because you're getting the synergy from here, I'm gonna get Gauge. As I showed you in the Gauge chart. This is the attack speed for four seconds. Just a little bit of damage. And uh, damage and a little bit of Gauge, okay? Extra Gauge, this is extra Gauge. And then this one, Longer distance, you travel with the mobility skill. This gives two stacks. This one is, uh, you know, you want to get this tripod. Lowers the cooldown. Very important. And then you can see the runes as well. This one is cooldown gauge. This is the biggest gauge skill for 1.5. And I'm going to choose this one. It gives a lot of gauge. The guillotine, cooldown reduction. So you could do double guillotine with double uh, furious claw. This one is an instant attack. Uh, you can play other variations, but that's when you become an expert, like expert, expert. This is extra damage, damage, charging, da damage, damage, damage. And then this one is you leap forward more, which is good to catch up the boss that are running away and damage, damage. For one cycle, you guys see the skill points. All right, let's go from uh, bottom. Same tripods for these boys. Same tripods for these boys. Spinning sword, same thing. Two variants I showed you guys. Animation one get uh, this one's faster animation, less gauge. And this one, same thing. Ground smash, gauge, and then you get uh tenacity, nicer, and then this one damage don't really matter. Gauge. This is for gauge. This gauge attack speed, party synergy, 10 seconds. And then this one is gauge. That's that. Those are the skills that I recommend. Cards, we talked about it. Gems, we talked about it. Engravings, we talked about it. Skins, I don't freaking know. And uh, accessories, rock, bracelet, we talked about everything. I think we're good. That's a wrap, guys. Long video, but that explains everything to do with the Punisher Slayer, dude. Peace.